Petrogem Inc. A series on mechanisms in geomechanics. This episode, Geomechanics Behind Fracturing Pressure Curves. Pressurized fracturing tests, such as mini-frac or defit, provide crucial information about the stresses and other important geomechanical and geological aspects of the rocks. In this episode, we want to study an idealized pressure curve for such tests, break it down in different segments, and explain the geomechanics behind each of these segments. Here is a simple introduction on how pressurized fracturing or hydraulic fracturing operation is conducted. This operation is performed on an isolated zone of a wellbore, which can be cased or open. In a simple pressurized fracturing test, the fracturing fluid is injected at a specific and constant rate for a certain period of time that is to be known by the response of the rock to injection. Then, pumping is stopped, although recording pressure continues. In massive hydraulic fracturing, the injection rate varies by time and propants are also injected, along with the fracturing fluid. Fluid pressure is measured throughout the entire test, most likely at the wellhead and occasionally downhole. If pressure is measured at the wellhead, it needs to be converted to downhole pressure by accounting for the hydrostatic column of the fluid and all the dynamic pressure losses caused by friction and other effects during injection. This conversion becomes more cumbersome in massive fracturing jobs, performed with high injection rates, especially for the viscose fluids with propants. To avoid complexities, which are out of the scope of this episode, we will use an ideal case of hydraulic fracturing that looks similar to common pressurized fracturing tests, such as mini-frac, extended leak-off, or defit. The curve in this figure simply shows how fracturing fluid pressure on the vertical axis varies with time on the horizontal axis. The rate of injection is assumed to remain constant before the pumps are turned off. Also, to make sure all the major details and variations are shown, the graph has not been drawn to scale. Note that, this is an ideal curve, and similar to many idealizations in engineering, the real curves will not look as smooth as this. Lastly, it was assumed that, prior to fracturing, no natural or induced fractures exist in the zone of interest. Through this episode, we will try to answer several important questions about the pressure curve. Why does pressure increase, decrease, or remain constant in each segment? At what pressure, a fracture initiates? At what stage, it can be considered a mature fracture? What pressure is required for a fracture to grow? What are the important pressure values on this curve? And how they can represent the mechanical state of the rock? How well-known pressure values, such as leak-off, initiation, breakdown, propagation, shut-in, and closure pressures are defined? And what is their geomechanical significance? When answering these questions, we will, deliberately, avoid getting deep in explaining mechanical models behind fracture initiation and propagation, for the sake of simplicity. And after this introduction, it is time for the real deal, to ride on the ups and downs of the pressure curve, and explore its every details, we are going to take this journey in the second part of this episode, make sure, you join us. Check out our different services at Petrogem.